flowering plants are divided into monocots and dicots. The distinguishing feature that lends their names is that within the seed, monocots have one cotyledon and dicots have two cotyledons. We've said before that cotyledons can be a source of food for the seed, although in monocots, the food reserves remain mostly within the endosperm, this part of the seed. And um, whereas in dicots, the endosperm is absorbed into the two cotyledons, so a mature dicot seed has no endosperm at all. In a quick comparison of monocots and dicots, we also find that monocots tend to have long, narrow leaves with parallel veins and scattered vascular tissue, whereas dicots have broad leaves with branching veins and vascular tissue in the arrangement of rings. So this is an outer ring of vascular tissue, and this is an inner ring that was badly drawn of vascular tissue. Monocots also have flower petals in multiples of three with fibrous root systems, and dicots have flower petals in multiples of four or five with a taproot system. It's not that important to recite these differences in detail, but be ready to recognize these differences when prompted. You should also know that monocots are generally grasses, such as um, lawn grass, wheat, rice, and corn. Remember, they all have long, narrow leaves. So you can also remember that monocots feed the world, so to speak. Dicots include daisies, roses, carrots, and they all have broad leaves. And daisies and roses have petals in multiples of four or five. So that's how you can remember dicots. Um, so just briefly remember single cotyledon, narrow, long leaf, vascular bundles, multiples of three, two cotyledons, broad leaf, rings, and multiples of four or five.